Hey chess friends, National Master James Cantor III here with chess.com and today we have game of the day with Tata Steel Chess 2021. With the white pieces we have Fabiano Caruana and with the black pieces we have Maxime Vachir Lagrave. Let's get right into today's game. E4, C5, Knight of 3 and D6, D4, snap snap. Knight f6, knight to c3, and here we go. We've been here before, right? a6 from MVL. You know you're going to get a knight orf. So bishop g5, e6, and f4. And here's the move, guys. We've been here before, right? He's done it with Niels. Queen to b6. Now, it didn't go his way in the Niels game, but he's going to try it again here against Fabiano. Queen to b6, and then there's queen to d2. This variation, of course, as we've seen before, is one of the most studied variations in chess, the Knight of Sicilian poisoned pawn variation, where we're going to give up a pawn as white here, and we're going to play very aggressive and try to mate black in all lines here. And black, on the contrary, is going to try to trade pieces and make sure that we can try to get some pawns, maybe make some some weaknesses and go into an end game where maybe we can even be slightly better after queen to d2 queen takes b2 attacking the rook obvious here and rook to b1 queen a3 exact position we had against Niels in the earlier rounds and after queen to a3 there's bishop e2 which is a different move from what Niels played Niels actually opted for f5 here and uh, fabi chooses bishop e2 solid positional move developing my piece why not and i'm threatening the castle or just preparing to castle playing stuff like f5 e5 playing aggressive but putting the bishop on e2 now knight to b b to d7 is usually the usual move or a usual move here if you check the database Knight to c6 from MVL is what he chose here. A lot of times in many Sicilians, you don't want to trade as right here on the c6 square. Reason being is because you just have these pawns that are extremely strong here. And this is what black kind of wants. Like we have stuff that we, we can do here. Now we do have a file and we, we do have some attacking chances, but you have to be careful as well. Now, in this case, Fabiano actually did capture, takes, and then here we go. Time to break it open, okay? Queen's out. You only have a knight developed. We know we're, we're threatening the castle. We're preparing the castle here. E5 is a real move. Move, and that's what he plays he just says break it open break it open you know we're going to try to open this file open lines and diagonals for our pieces we have the bishops we have an open rook file that we can use another one we're going to open up the lines and diagonals so e5 is what he chooses and mvl making a smart choice says no we're not opening anything not just yet and if we do we're going to trade first because trades i want says mbl knight takes d5 e takes d5 here opening up the bishop line and now guys what would you do in this position search the board you have many moves here right maybe f5 maybe pawn takes c4 bishop d3 or e2 or even just castling is a simple move right but here we go this is what fabi chose you ready E6, whoa, E6 is on the board. E6, you just look at it like, what is this? Am, I mean, I'm scared, but at the same time, I'm not like, what? E6, right? Now, there's actually two ways you can capture this, F or uh, the bishop or with the pawn. Let's check with the pawn first. If F takes E6 here, well, this looks pretty cool, right? Pretty solid structure, maybe playing here and this and this, but you gotta be very careful. Why just castles? Castles, okay, I'll play bishop to E7. Now I'm about to threatening to probably capture and castles or some some Somehow try to castle, maybe getting our queen back here. But bishop e7, we maybe trade pieces. Maybe we'll hand castle. But here we go. Bishop takes e7, king takes e7, and oh my goodness, f5, and we live. Here it is, opening up stuff. Queen to g5, looking scary. And if you try to protect, I mean, we have the open file here. This is extremely scary. And again, only a queen developed here with king safety, non existent for black here. After f5, there's queen c5 check. We need to bring our queen back into the game somehow, some way, hopefully. And then we play king to h1 to step out of the way. And we need to stop this check. So there's h6 here. And then after f takes e6, threatening rook f7 check. Very strong. So we have to get rid of that. Cool. Everything looks cool, right? Except you left the back door open. Rook b7 check, king d8. And then queen to f4, threatening mate on the back rank with the queen sacrifice. So we step out of the way so we can attack this rook. We have to do something. Rook f to b1, doubling the rooks here. And then we play rook to d8, maybe to play rook d7, but you won't get a chance to after bishop g4. Ha, start a new game. Best move here is actually queen b5 and we live, but that's not live at all. Queen b5 is gg. We're just, if this is your best move, this is not a good game, right? That's that's a very bad line. You don't want to go down that line. So maybe, okay, we'll take with the bishop then. Bishop takes e6, castles, threatening f5. Very strong move. Rook's coming to the center. I mean, king is just getting destroyed here. And after castles, there's g6. So we have to stop f5. But hey, you, you leave this open. Bishop f6, very strong. Rook to g8 as we step out of the way here. And then rook to f3, attacking a queen. Queen has to go somewhere. We have two squares. Well, let's look at the check. Looks logical, uh, but you lose your queen. 
have a nice day, right? GG, queen has no squares to go to at all. So we have to go queen a4 here, which is crazy. And then we're just going to run through the line here so we can get back to the game. c4, rook e3, captures, captures, and then check on, on the seventh rank. King goes back to f8, and this is disastrous. Like, the whole game, what is black doing? Defending his king. g4 with a mate threat on g5, rook h3 as well. I mean, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. g5 to try to stop something, but it still only uh, never stops the inevitable here. It just doesn't stop it that's mate so we saw this says mvl he's like nah you know what i mean i see it all the way through but i know that's not fun to play so we're going to play f6 here which is very ugly move here man f6 king's in the center there's a pawn on e6 what happened how is this already weird like this bishop h5 very nice move here just a king hunt if g6 we have bishop takes f6 attacking the rook so king to d8 he steps out of the way and then we have bishop h4 we're not going to allow you to just take my bishop so then d4 here sacrificing yet another pawn here or not another pawn but just sacrificing a pawn why would we do this well the intention is actually after captures there's queen a5 threatening the bishop here and double attack on the king so we actually picking up some material so fabi says you know what uh no bishop f2 I'm going to take it with my bishop instead. Queen to c3 from MVL says, hey, we got to get the queens off. We need to trade. Trades will definitely help me. And this attack is way too fast. So Fabiano says, okay, hey, queen trade, unavoidable. Can't do anything about it. But I can do something about this, F5. So we're going to go into another mode here. I'm accepting that we're going to go into an endgame, so I'm preparing. F5, says Fabi. Queen takes D2 because we need to stay consistent. This is what we wanted. So queen takes D2, king takes, and then C5 defending the D4 pawn. Now here in an endgame, this is getting closer to an endgame here. These pawns here are going to be targets. Now they're pretty strong right now, but later on, these could be definitely very bad targets and something that is scary to face. You have two double pawns in the center, which is usually bad in an end game but early in a middle game and things like that they're they're totally fine after c5 there's bishop to f3 here we're rerouting the bishop g4 being a potential idea we couldn't do it with our bishop on h5 it just looks weird with our bishop on h5 and a pawn on g4 attacking the bishops look great here but we do have a wall we have to get through rook a7 from mvl and then here we go g4 we're making sure we make this very nice and solid here and uh, g6 from mvl Bishop h4, making some threats. It's always good to make threats. If g5, we just back up. g3 or, f, or uh, f2, g3 being the better move, just putting some pressure on the weak pawn. Bishop e7, I have to develop, says MVL. I have been waiting and just defending the whole game. Can I finally get my pieces out? Bishop e7, and then rook b6, what a move here. Just actually putting pressure here, not actually attacking anything, but what a move here. Sometimes you want to put pieces in your opponent's position so that you can make, you can annoy them. And this is definitely one of those moves here as it's threatening the, the, the d6 pawn especially after g3 happening and doubling the rooks which is very annoying black has really no play here what a positional squeeze after rook b6 there's h5 because we have to do something we have to break this up this is getting annoying so he plays h3 ah huh? <laughs> not yet mvl you're not breaking this up h3 and then there's king to e8 well we have to shuffle pieces what a position where it feels like you can't do really anything and you kind of have to sit and wait around where fabiano is making all the best moves that he can bishop to g3 attacking the d6 pawn and now it is hanging rook to c7 here because there's really not much else to do you can't even defend the pawn here after rook to c7 there's king to d3 look at this beautiful king move approaching with my king also threatening to take on d4 because c4 was a potential move uh, this is something maybe mbl was planning so he actually stops it in his tracks by threatening king takes d4 h takes g4 h takes g4 we want trades cool trades will help black but not in this it's getting worse it's getting a little bit worse here because like we have weaknesses this pawn's going to fall which makes this one might fall these pawns are extremely strong the rook is very active this is inactive this bishop's bad like if you just compare the pieces white's definitely winning in every area bishop takes h1 and then g takes f5 and g takes f5 and here we go guys bishop f8 shuffling pieces ouch what a position to be in where white just slowly improves the position king to c4 bringing the king much closer then we play rook to h7 finally we can do something but at least we're, we're still on the seventh rank we went rook a7 rook c7 and rook h7 the whole game here we're just defending it really hurts to see bishop to e4 beautiful move as we're defending the pawn as it could be weak in some cases and we don't want to waste the tempo or a move just trying to defend this pawn bishop to e7 from mvl and after bishop e7 it's time to snatch this pawn on d6 bishop takes 
bishop takes rook takes and bishop to b7 to make some trades but at this point this was already over guys this in game is completely winning as we see the king is already very active here this king is inactive trades are going to help us and after this guys let's check this out in game 101 we trade and then we take a pawn and then we take another one right here and this is over rook takes c2 king takes d4 and then MVL resigned in this position as this is just a winning in game guys. There's nothing we can do We're going to take the seventh rank and of course MVL just didn't want to go through the technique in the end here of This pawn this is definitely weak as well. We're going to put the rook on a seventh rank We have checks that we can avoid we even can bring it back in some cases There's many ways to win this in game, but MVL resigned right here and this Guys, this was game of the day. I'm National Master James Canty the third here with chess.com I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys on the next video